Dr. Fizz here, Theoretical Physics, Chapter K, the Pauli Equation, and in this section, Measurement. Measurement can be understood in quantum mechanics by looking at the Schrodinger equation, where you have your derivatives and your potential energy on one side, hitting the psi, and on the right-hand side is E psi, when you have the potential independent of the time. H stands for Hamiltonian, and it's nothing but the left side of the Schrodinger equation here, and I've chosen the third eigenstate in particular, which will give me the third energy value in front when I do my uh, calculation here. This is an eigenvalue problem. If you have an eigenstate of an operator, you get the same thing back times uh, an eigenvalue in front and this will be the third energy level. So I can think of making a measurement of this state. I'll get the third energy level, and I can think of the measurement as having a corresponding operator that goes with the energy. I operate on the state, get the same state back, and the eigenvalue is what I measure. It's instructive to do this for our particle in the box, bouncing back and forth, to do a nice review and see how this works in detail. So let's look at that, and we have for the particle in the box, for the third case, the third harmonic, we go to our fitting room and we fit three half waves to L. And the wave number is 2 pi over that wavelength. So 2 pi over the wavelength, the wavelength is 2 L over 3, which you can see very easily, by the way, from the picture. You have one crest and one trough, that's one wavelength, and that's two thirds of the way across, so two-thirds L is the wavelength. Then when I work this out, the three comes up in the numerator, the two cancels, and I have three pi over L. I put that in for my K to get my third wave function, and the question is, if I apply the Hamiltonian, which is the left side of the Schrodinger equation, to this state, do I get the same thing back with the third energy? Here I can set V equal to zero because there's no potential energy. The Hamiltonian consists of just kinetic energy. And I know what my answer has to be from my formula I worked out earlier. Simply let n equal 3, and you'll get 3 squared, you get 9, pi squared h bar squared over 2m l squared. Will I get this if I hit this wave function with the h? Will I get that? That's the question. Will I get the energy I expect and the same thing back? Let's do it, and if we do that, we find that we get the second derivative working on this sign. We'll get the same thing back with a minus sign and some stuff out in front. What comes out in front is what is here hitting the x. 3 pi over L will come out two times for the uh, second derivative. So that'll give us 9 pi squared over L squared. And the minus sign will cancel this minus sign on the second derivative. We get negative the sign back. And here I have h bar squared over 2m, and I get it, it works. A very nice review, and it helps us master the concepts. So with measurement ideas, with spin here, let's take the uh, Pauli matrix and the z, the z component for the Pauli matrix, z Pauli matrix, have it work on spin up state, and that Pauli matrix, sigma sub z, is one, zero, zero, negative one, so one times one plus zero times zero is one. Zero times one plus negative one times zero is zero. So I get the same state back. The eigenvalue is one. So if I make a measurement, I'll get one. However, uh, with the electron intrinsic spin, the measurement is h bar over two is what you get. So the operator for measuring the z component of the intrinsic spin is h bar over two times this operator uh, sigma sub z. You might recall when Bohr quantized angular momentum, he quantized orbital angular momentum in terms of n integers, energy positive integer times h bar. This is the mysterious intrinsic angular momentum for the electron called the spin, which can either be one half or negative one half, and that is why we have h bar over 2 here. Let's look at this in a more abstract where we have make measurements. We have here an operator A works on psi, gives back psi with an eigenvalue little a. Uh, if these are measurements, this little a will be a real number. Since we make measurements, we get real numbers. And in quantum mechanics, you learn your operator that goes with that measurement has to be Hermitian. Well, let's consider a b operator working on psi and getting little b times psi. So here we find that the psi is an eigenstate for both operators, 
B and the operator A since we got the same thing back in each case with the respective eigenvalues. If that's the case we can make the measurement in different order. We can here have A B on the side which makes the B measurement first. Get little b psi, pull the little b out, just a real number, and then when A operator works on psi we get little a psi and we get then b a times psi. These are the eigenvalues. If we do the operation in reverse measuring a first so you get little a psi pull that little a out and then b on psi you get little b and little a little b times little b little a they're equal. These are just real numbers. You're going to multiply them in any order. So therefore if you subtract those equations you get zero which means that the operators must commute the operator A times the operator B minus the operator B times the operator A must vanish and that's the definition of the commutator. So when you have an eigenstate for two operators those operators will commute. We have a problem when we look at the Pauli matrix for X because if we have that working on the spin up case that we had from before the Pauli matrix here for x is 0, 1, 1, 0. When you operate that on the spin up state, 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. And you've changed the state. You don't get the same thing back. So if you try making a measurement here with this operator, I don't get the same thing back. I'm in trouble. So comparing that with the z measurement, if we make the measurement of the spin up state, we get 1 for the eigenvalue and the state is up. But if we apply the x next, we will destroy this state. We'll get something else. We'll knock it down. And then if we go back and measure it again with the z operator, we'll get a spin with it down, which is a negative one eigenvalue. So you would expect then here, since sigma x messes things up, that sigma x and sigma z don't commute since they don't share the same eigenstates. Well you already know that's the case from an earlier uh, calculation. If we do the commutator for the z x and z Pauli matrices, here's the x1 0 1 1 0, here's the z1 1 0 0 negative 1, and then you flip it and subtract. Let's work it out and see what happens. Well uh, 0 times 1 plus 1 times uh, 0 is 0 and 0 times 0 plus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. 1 times 0 plus 0 times negative 1 is going to be 0. And here if we get 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 it's 0. 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 is 1. 0 times 0 plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And 0 times 1 plus negative 1 times 0 is 0. So when we subtract these we get negative 1 minus 1 here we get a negative 2 up here which I pull the 2 out and here we have negative negative we have a plus 2 which I pulled out. If you express this in terms of the sigma sub y which you know the case from working this general uh, formula out before, uh, let's check it. Uh, I times negative I is a plus 1 so you'll have a negative 2 up there, negative 2 I times I is negative 1, you'll have a plus 2 down there. Remember your general formula here which you worked out before and got the Levi Civita or Levi Civita symbol. You have here uh, 2 is over here at the right because Y is 2 so we have 1 and 3, let's check it out, 1 and 3 1 and 3 is not in cyclic order because we skipped 2 so you'll get the third one, the 2, but you'll have here a minus sign when you apply the Levi Civita symbol. You'll have 1, 3, and 2, and that will be a negative 1 coming out for that particular case, and the 2i is there. So when operators do not commute, the measurements disturb the states, and this is an uncertainty relation which we'll look at in more carefully in the next section, the famous Heisenberg uncertainty relation.